Hello everyone. A very very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here and today I am here to start a new series in pharmacology that is antimicrobial drugs. So in this series I am going to take all antimicrobial drugs one by one on YouTube free sessions. So today first I will give you the general considerations classification of antibiotics and I will start with protein synthesis inhibitors. So basically in today's lecture I am going to teach you four antibiotics the four main protein synthesis inhibitors that is tetracycline chloramphenicol all aminoglycosides and macrolide that is the most important erythromycin so these four i am going to take today in tomorrow's lecture we will continue with beta lactams that is most important will be penicillin cephalosporins and after that we will continue with sulfonamides quinolones and after that antimalarial antifungal so in this series basically we will cover all antimicrobials one by one i hope you will learn a lot this topic is really very important for all competitive exams neat pg fmg inict next many mcqs come from this so you can assure your mcqs by uh, watching my series here and not only this, this topic is also very important for the university exam of second prof MBBS students who are going to write their university exam this year in pharmacology, right? So without wasting time, I'm just starting it, antimicrobial drugs. So before that, you should know the classification of antimicrobial drugs. Just a second. This is the classification of antimicrobial drugs. There are six ways to classify antimicrobial drugs. What are the six ways? Let me tell you the six ways. So we can classify them based on their chemical structure. We can classify them based on the organism against which it is active, based on the spectrum of their activity, whether it is narrow, whether it is broad, based on their mechanism of action. So this classification is most important based on which all my chapters will be based on their type of action, whether it is bacteriocidal or bacteriostatic based on the antibiotic is obtained from which organism is it obtained from fungus bacteria or actinomycetes so first i will teach you the 12 um, the six ways of classifying all antibiotics then we will start the antibiotics one by one and in today's lecture we will discuss protein synthesis inhibitors tetracycline chloramphenicol aminoglycosides and erythromycin that is macrolide so without wasting time i am starting the classification based on the chemical structure now this classification is not very important you should have a look on it so based on the chemical structure we divide the antibiotics into 17 groups based on their chemical formula all antimicrobials are the drugs so they are chemicals they have certain specific chemical formulas so some of them are sulfonamides which have sulfur group in them so these are the sulfonamides. Some of them are di diaminopyramidins. Some of them are quinolones. Some of them are beta lactams, which have beta lactam rings in their structure. Some of them have four rings in their structure. That's why they are known as tetracycline. Some of them have nitro benzene ring in their structure. That's why known as nitrobenzene. Some of them are aminoglycosides. Macrolides means they have a very big large ring. Some of them are lincosamide. So based on the chemical structure, these are all the groups. So don't learn this classification, but have a look on it that which uh, antibiotic is belonging to which category, right? After that, the second way of classification is the type of organism against which the antibiotics or antimicrobial drugs are active. So if they are active against the bacteria, of course, they are antibacterial. If they are active against fungus, they are antifungal. If it is virus, antiviral, if it is uh, the protozoa, it is antiprotozoa and helminth, it is anti-helminth. So these two are the parasites. So these two are antiparasitic. Parasites are of two types. We know protozoa and helminths. So antiprotozoa, anti-helminths, that is antiparasitic drug. So basically we have four microorganisms, bacteria, virus, fungus and parasites. So antibacterial, antiviral antifungal and antiparasitic antiparasitic are further divided into two categories so that is the classification based on the type of organism against which it is active right coming on the next coming on the spectrum of the activity some of them are narrow spectrum that is they kill a particular microorganism like if you talk about antibiotic it is it will kill us uh, only gram negative only gram positive bacilli gram negative cocci so they have particular group of activity and they kill only that bacteria they are active against that organism only that is narrow active for example penicillins streptomycin erythromycin these are narrow spectrum these are very narrow spectrum but if you say like penicillins are active against gram positive but streptomycin is active against gram negative right this is how but broad spectrum are the antibiotics which are active against all. 
so these are broad spectrum tetracyclines chloramphenicol right so that is based on the spectrum of the activity we know we divide all the organisms in entire microbiology into four categories you already know the four categories i guess gram positive cocci known as gpc gram negative cocci known as gnc gram positive bacilli known as gpb and gram negative bacilli known as gnb right so the bacteria inside them i guess everyone knows it so if i say it is narrow spectrum i must mention which category of the bacteria that particular antibiotic is active and if i say broad spectrum that is active against all that is the meaning of narrow and broad spectrum i guess you got it after that uh the next way of classifying is the mechanism of action the most important is mechanism of action now if we want to kill a bacteria there are four ways we can kill a bacteria let me show you what are the four ways let me draw a bacterial cell this is the cell of the bacteria all bacteria are surrounded by cell wall so this is the cell membrane this is the cell wall outer is the cell wall right cell membrane cell wall and inside the bacteria this is the nucleus this is the dna of the bacteria and uh, this is the ribosome of the bacteria on which protein synthesis takes place so you can see this is a bacterial cell it is not a human cell now if you want to kill this bacteria there are four ways outer to inner i will talk about the first way you can give some antibiotics which inhibit cell wall synthesis cell wall synthesis inhibitors so you can give some some antibiotics which are cell wall synthesis inhibitors basically here beta lactams are there there are four type of beta lactams we know the penicillin cephalosporin car carbapenem and monobactam all of them inhibit cell wall synthesis if the cell wall of the bacteria is inhibited synthesis is inhibited this bacteria cannot divide and this new cell wall cannot be synthesized and bacteria will die so cell wall synthesis inhibitors are a group of um, antibiotics uh, which show their mechanism of action by inhibiting cell wall synthesis just inner to the cell wall we have cell membrane we have cell membrane so there are certain antibiotics which cause pores in the cell membrane so all the vital material inside the bacteria is leaked out is leaked out that is they are acting on cell membrane and they are causing pores in the cell membrane and from those pores the vital material leaks out and the bacteria will die so there are certain certain um, drugs which act by this mechanism so basically here are some antifungal drugs right so that will act by so uh, this mechanism they will cause pores in the cell membrane the second mechanism the third mechanism there are some antibiotics which inhibit nucleic acid which inhibit nucleic acid synthesis inhibit nucleic acid synthesis in the bacteria these were inhibiting cell wall these are causing pores in the cell membrane these are inhibiting nucleic acid by nucleic acid i mean it can be dna i mean it can be rna so either they inhibit dna synthesis or they inhibit rna synthesis so they will be of two type now again the dna synthesis inhibitors will be of two type direct inhibitors and indirect inhibitors what do you mean by direct and indirect what do you mean by direct and indirect the direct inhibitors actually inhibit the replication of the dna they will inhibit the enzyme like dna polymerase rna polymerase they actually inhibit the dna new dna replication the dna synthesis right but the indirect one will inhibit indirect one one will inhibit folic acid synthesis not dna but folic acid is required for dna you know so it is indirect so the indirect one will inhibit folic acid synthesis synthesis and folic acid is required for dna synthesis that's why these are the indirect one and the fourth and the last one some are the antibiotics which inhibit protein synthesis that is my chapter today protein synthesis inhibitors protein synthesis inhibitors again in the ribosome we have two parts you may be knowing in the ribosome we have 30s and we have 50s right so these are the two parts 30s and 50s of the ribosome so again protein synthesis inhibitors are divided into two parts the antibiotics which act on 30s the antibiotics which act on 50s the antibiotics which act on both the junction 30s and 50s so here we divide them like this you got my point so these are the four ways you can uh, the, the the drugs can act on the bacteria and inhibit either the growth of the bacteria or kill the bacteria what are the four ways the four ways are in front of you there are some antibiotics which inhibit cell wall synthesis there are some antibiotics which causes pores in the cell membrane there are some antibiotics which inhibit nucleic acid synthesis either dna or rna if it is dna it can be direct or indirect and there are some antibiotics which inhibit protein synthesis in the bacteria so protein synthesis inhibitors either they act on 30s or 50s or both so that is the classification give me a thumbs up if you got the classification the four ways are written in front of you you can read the name of the four names the cell wall synthesis inhibitors there are certain antibiotics which causes holes or pores 
in the cell membrane so they cause le they cause leakage from the cell membrane there are some antibiotics which inhibit protein synthesis and there are certain antibiotics which inhibit nucleic acid synthesis so everyone give me a thumbs up in the chat box if you got it anu others have you got it these are the four ways by which antibiotic acts on a bacterial cell and try to kills the bacterial cell or the organism so the same diagram which i have drawn it is uh, it is shown here it is from one of the book so you can see there are some antibiotics which inhibit cell wall synthesis these are the beta lactams right so they are inhibiting the cell wall there are certain antibiotics which act on the cell membrane and they will cause pores in the cell membrane so leakage will be there so cell membrane causing pores so most um, example common example here is polymyxins are there there are certain antibiotics which act on the nucleic acid and inhibit nucleic acid synthesis it can be dna it can be rna it can be direct it can be indirect and the last one which is my chapter today there are antibiotics which act on the ribosome some act on 30s some act on 50s and they ultimately inhibit protein synthesis in the bacteria so let me skip the theory you can read the theory by yourself i have explained you you have to learn the examples of each category right that is the drugs based on this mechanism right okay that is the classification of the drug based on mechanism of action we classify the drugs into four category based on mechanism of action we classify the drugs into four categories so if it is done the next classification is based on the type of the action based on the type of action antibiotics are of two type there are you can see this is a culture plate on this culture plate you can appreciate the colonies of the bacteria if you give some antibiotic and all the bacteria are dead you can see no not even a single colony is existing after applying antibiotics so these antibiotics are bactericidal they kill the bacteria they kill the bacteria you can see other type of antibiotic on this culture plate we are applying you can see here i have applied few drops here i have applied few drops these are the colonies on the culture plate you can appreciate the colonies this antibiotic you can see here after application of the antibiotic on the culture plate the bacteria are not dead but count the colonies here the same count of the colony is here so they inhibit the growth of the bacteria they are inhibiting the growth of the bacteria these are known as static bacteriostatic so there are two type of antibiotics bactericidal and bacteriostatic so what are the two types of antibiotic based on their type of action it is bacteriocidal bacteriocidal kills bacteria they kills bacteria and bacteriostatic they do not kill bacteria existing one are not killed the the existing one will remain as it is but they inhibit the growth they inhibit the growth they inhibit the cell division they inhibit the binary fission in the bacteria you got my point so bacteriocidal the word cidal means killing and bacteriostatic static means it remains same only the thing uh, the existing one will remain same but it, they cannot grow further so these that is the classification based on so you should know which antibiotics are bacteriostatic and which antibiotics are bactericidal when i will teach you any particular group in mechanism of action i always tell you which antibiotic is bacteriocidal and which is bacteriostatic right so that is the thing last the classification is based on antibiotics are obtained from which organism the antibiotics are obtained from which organism how we create antibiotics antibiotics are created by genetic engineering right by genetic engineering so we use a vector and with that vector we insert the particular gene of interest into some organism and we create it so it can be some fungus it can be some bacteria it can be some actinomycetes so you can see some antibiotics are uh, created inside the fungus examples are penicillin cephalosporins that is beta lactams some antibiotics are created inside the bacteria some are inside actinomycetes so you should learn the examples examples are important you got my point so after that we are done with the classification of the antibiotics let me start the chapter now everyone have a look so based on the classification we classify antibiotics by six ways the six ways are written in front of you what are the six ways the first way is based on the chemical structure based on chemical structure we divide the antibiotics into 17 categories but don't learn it just have a look on that based on the type of organism they are acting so they can be antibacterial antiviral antifungal and antiparasite the four organisms four type of uh, anti uh, biotics you can say right spectrum of activity so they can be of narrow they can be of broad narrow spectrum broad spectrum based on mechanism of action the four categories some act on cell wall inhibit cell wall some act on cell membrane causes 
pores in the cell membrane causes leakage from the cell membrane some act on nucleic acid inhibit the synthesis of nucleic acid and some act on the ribosome and inhibit the protein synthesis that is my chapter today protein synthesis inhibitors tomorrow i will teach you cell wall synthesis inhibitor after that i will teach you nucleic acid synthesis inhibitor and in the end i will teach you some cell membrane leakage the antibiotics which cause leakage from the cell membrane so in this sequence i will cover all antibiotics right based on the type of action they are of two type bacteriocidal and bacteriostatic and based with whether they are obtained from which organism some obtained from fungus some obtained from bacteria some obtained from actinomycetes everyone give me a thumbs up if you got the six ways of classifying antibiotics if you got the six ways of classifying antibiotics let me start the uh, first chapter just a second let me start the first chapter you have to give me a minute uh, to jump on protein synthesis inhibitors so i'm skipping the sulfonamides and quinolones that is nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors today i will cover protein synthesis inhibitors and in tomorrow's lecture we will cover the nucleic acid and cell wall synthesis inhibitors so let me start with protein synthesis inhibitors you can see i'm starting protein synthesis inhibitors i'm sorry protein synthesis inhibitors so in this chapter uh, basically i will teach you four antibiotics in this category so you can see this is the list of antibiotics which act by this mechanism all these antibiotics are protein synthesis inhibitor so they are 10 in number but these 10 out of these 10 the first four are most important so i will teach you these four in a comparative manner today so i will teach you tetracyclines chloramphenicol aminoglycoside and macrolide the macrolide one the most important macrolide is erythromycin so basically i'm going to teach you these four antibiotics one by one before starting protein synthesis inhibitors these antibiotics so i will start with the classification of each group in each group i will tell you the name of the drugs in each category so classification after classification exact mechanism of action then the uses then the adverse effects and the interactions pharmacokinetics contraindication we will study everything about these four uh, classes four categories in a comparative manner with a numerous uh, mnemonics i will give you mnemonics for the uses and adverse effects in mechanism of action i will show you simplified diagrams and the flow charts so it will be very easy for you to retain the four antibiotics the four type of protein synthesis inhibitors but before that before showing the mechanism of action of each of them let me show you how normally protein synthesis takes place in a bacteria we know for protein synthesis there are two steps the transcription and translation you may be knowing it transcription is formation of rna from dna first dna get converted into mrna in the nucleus this mrna comes from the nucleus into the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm this mrna go to the ribosome 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 have two windows right p window and a window so this mrna have codons so the codons fits in the window and this mrna get converted into amino acids the chain of the amino acid corresponding codon stands for corresponding amino acid in this way protein synthesis takes place by two steps transcription and translation let me show you let me show you a very simplified diagram have a look on it you yourself decide so can you see the first step is the transcription can you see this is transcription in which this is dna dna get converted to mrna conversion of dna to mrna is transcription and this mrna will come out of the nucleus it will go in the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm this mrna will bind on the ribosome it is having codon one codon stands for one amino acid there are specific codons so basically it is a triplet codon is a triplet of the nucleotides we are having four nucleotides adin um, cytosine guanine uh, adenosine and thymidine you may be knowing so these are the four amino acids we, if we make triplets out of the four there will be 64 in number so there are 64 codons and we have 20 amino acids so 64 codons stands for 20 amino acids right and ultimately the mrna get converted to protein so conversion of mrna to protein is known as translation so i guess you got what is transcription what is translation now have a look on this diagram what i am talking about please everyone uh, see on your gadgets and concentrate what i want to explain you can you see a cell here can you see a cell here yes you all can see a cell this is a bacterial cell can you see this is a bacterial cell inside this bacterial cell can you see a nucleus yes you all can see a nucleus inside this bacterial cell okay can you see a dna this is the double stranded dna inside this bacterial cell very good okay uh, so while doing while protein synthesis uh, first trans uh, transcription will take place so the two strands of the dna can you appreciate these are the two strands of the dna first they will separate 
one is leading one is lagging so one of them is leading and one of them is lagging right so the leading strand on the leading strand the corresponding you know corresponding nucleotides will come and dna will convert into mrna you can see how mrna is formed this step is known as transcription this is transcription in transcription dna get converted into mrna everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up ujwal swaraj give me a thumbs up anusha please give me a thumbs up this is how dna get converted into mrna in the nucleus now this mrna will leave the nucleus and come in the cytoplasm see in the next diagram so this mrna already left the nucleus and it already arrived in the cytoplasm after going in the cytoplasm it is binding with the ribosome so this mrna is binding with the ribosome now please have a look on the ribosome please everyone have a look on the ribosome in the ribosome you can see there are two windows the first window is the p window the second window is the a window give me a thumbs up the first window is p so the first codon c1 always bind with the p window it is a rule and the second codon c2 binds with the a window right in the ribosome we have 30s and 50s at the junction of 30 and 50s we have two windows p and a first codon c1 bind with uh, p window and second codon binds now this codon can be anyone you know the initiating codon it is a u g a u a there are many codons i don't remember them but yeah there are 64 type of codons the first will bind at the p window the second will bind at the a window now everyone see here let me zoom this ribosome for you i will not in the next diagram you cannot see the entire cell i will show you only ribosome so this is the zoom version of the ribosome can you see this is the zoom version give me a thumbs up now you can see the ribosome in the ribosome we have uh, 30s we have 50s at the junction of 30 and 50s we have two windows the p window the a window now listen you can see the mrna already attached here where is the mrna the c1 is already attached to the p window and c2 is already attached at the a window give me a thumbs up c1 at the p window and c2 at the a window got a got a uh, got my point now what will happen uh, these are the 64 type of codons they are in front of you i will not read the table in biochemistry you already know it you are an MBBS student, I guess, and in biochemistry, I have already learned the 64 codons, the 64 combinations possible in the codon, right, right, of adenine, guanine, cytosin, and uracil. Out of these four nucleotides, we can make 64 combinations. So, which, which of them is standing for which amino acid? So, these 64 code for 20 amino acid. We know that, right? So, basically, have a look on the bacterial cell. What exactly happens? Can you see the same bacterial cell? this is the same bacterial cell in this bacterial you can see this is the first codon at p window yes this is the second codon at a window right now see the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm the bacteria have 20 type of amino acid present in the cytoplasm so you can see this is a1 this is a2 this is a3 a4 a5 so all 20 type of amino acids these are amino acids present in the cytoplasm they are not present alone they are present on trna they are present on trna trna is their transporter their transporter the transporter carries the amino acid from here and there give me a thumbs up so all 20 are present in the cytoplasm now the c1 stand from one of them just suppose the c1 stand for a1 right whatever a1 it stands for methionine trypsin whatever so this c1 whatever amino acid it is standing for it will give a call it will give a call in the cytoplasm that methionine wherever you are please come here there is a call for you so the c1 is already arrived and you have to come on the ribosome so in the cytoplasm wherever wherever the amino acid which is standing for this first codon wherever it is present it will come and bind here so there is a call for the amino acid so the call for the c1 will the first call so here ribosome will call that just suppose the first codon is AUG. So, whatever amino acid standing for AUG, please come here. That will be the call. So, maybe it may be methionine, it can be phenylalanine, it can be any amino acid, you know. So, the combinations you already know. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. So, you can see here, the first amino acid already arrived here. And it bind at the, it is already bind at the uh, P window. See, this A1. It already bind at the P window. Can you see? Give me a thumbs up here. Ujwal, true believer, you got it. Anusha, Swaraj. So, A1 is already bind here at the P window. Now, there will be call for the C2. C2, whatever amino acid present for the C2 in the cytoplasm, please come and bind here. So, C2 pe A2 will bind. You got my point? So, the first codon ke liye amino acid bind at the P window. The second codon ke liye amino acid will bind at the A window. So, these are the two steps we got it. So, the, the first step, this is known as initiation. When A1 is binding on C1, this is known as initiation initiation please learn it is initiation when the second amino acid the second amino acid is binding 
uh, at the A window, this step is known as attachment of new amino acid at the A side. This is step 2. So, first step was initiation in which A1 is binding on the P window. The second step is attachment of new uh, amino acyl tRNA. That is new amino acid with tRNA at the A window. This is second step. This is second step. Now, this is the pre-existing one. This is the new one. You can understand this one is pre-existing, right? And this one is the new. So, there is peptide-peptide bond formation between the two. The third step. The peptide, you can see there is peptide peptide bond formation between the two and the pre-existing one will move to the new one. New will not go to the pre-existing, it is a rule. The pre-existing will go to the new, that is P to A shift. So the pre-existing one is on the P window, it is shifting from P to A. So step 3 is P to A shift, P to A shift. So there is peptide peptide bond formation between the pre-existing and the new and after bond formation the pre-existing will shift to the new. The pre-existing one will sure shift to the new one, new one that is P to A shift. This is step 3. The first step was initiation, right? The second step in initiation, the first amino acid is coming at the P window. The second step is the new amino acid is coming at the A window. After that there is peptide peptide bond formation between the two and the pre-existing will shift to the new that is P to A shift. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Now coming on the so you can see here the pre-existing is shifted over the new and P window is empty now. P window so it already shifted here. So A window P we are having the chain. Now the chain of the amino acid is present on the A window and P window is empty for the next for the uh, next uh, this thing uh, next uh, call you got my point now this is the third step is over now what will happen please this the, this is the last step and it is very difficult to understand the complete ribosome you can see the radicular ribosome the complete ribosome will shift ahead by one codon will shift ahead by one codon you can see the complete ribosome is shifting here ye ribosome ka ribosome move karega complete ribosome will move by one codon so whatever present um so, P window will come here, A window will come here and this chain will go on the P window. Chain will remain there only. This A1, A2 will remain there only. It is not shifting. Only ribosome is shifting. Only ribosome is shifting. mRNA is not shifting. This chain is not shifting. Only ribosome with the two windows are shifting. So, P window will come here. Right? P window will come here and A window will go to the C3. P window will come to the C2. A, C1 will be empty. See, like this. You got my point. The complete ribosome moved by one codon. This step is known as translocation. This step is known as translocation. Give me a thumbs up. So what happened actually in this step? See, this is the third step. The chain, the peptide chain was present on A window. But because of the shift of ribosome, the peptide, the peptide chain shifted from A to P. This is known as A to P shift. This is known as, this is the last step, it is known as A to P shift. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. You got my point. So, the last step is the translocation. So, there are four steps. There are four steps. Who will tell me what are the four steps? The first step is the initiation. The first step is the initiation. Initiation. In initiation, the first amino acid A1 will come the, and it will bind to the P window. Yes, I am right. The second step is coming of new amino acyl. TRNA, new amino acyl TRNA will come, that is A2 will come and it will bind at the A window, right? That is the second step. In the third step, there is peptide-peptide bond formation between the pre-existing and new and the pre-existing will shift to the new, not the new to the pre-existing. So, that pre-existing will shift to the new, that is P to A shift. So, P to A shift occurs in step 3. So, this is step 1, this is step 2, this is step 3. Listen my points very carefully, right? And the last step, the complete ribosome will move by one codon. The complete, this is known as translocation. This is known as translocation. In translocation, the complete ribosome, since it shifts by one codon, so the amino acid chain, which was present on A, it was P to A now. Now it will go from A to P. So the fourth step is A to P. You can say the first step is binding of new amino acid. Listen, the first step is binding of new amino acid. At P, that is initiation. The second step is binding of new amino acid at A, that is that is new amino acid tRNA. The third step is P to A, peptide peptide bond form, form, bond formation and P to A, P to A shift, P window to A window shift, and the last step is translocation, that is A to P. Everyone first give me a thumbs up, then only I will proceed. If you got these four steps, it will be fun for you to understand the four antibiotics. Now I want to teach you four antibiotics. What are my four antibiotics for today? I want to teach you four protein synthesis inhibitors, tetracyclines. Chloramphenicol, aminoglycoside, and macrolide one that is erythromycin. These four I want to teach you today. So four steps, the four antibiotics. Each one of them will inhibit one step. 
You got my point? So, amino glycoside inhibits the first step initiation. Initiation is inhibited by amino glycoside, the first step. So, that is the mechanism of action of amino glycoside. Tetracycline inhibits the second step. The second step that is coming. So, amino glycoside act on P window. They inhibit P window. So, no amino acid can come on P window. They inhibit P window. Uh, tetracycline inhibit A window. So, no new amino acid can come. So, here it is a pre-existing one. Here it is a new one. New cannot come. New cannot come. Chloramphenicol act on the third step. It act on the third step. So, peptide-peptide bond formation will not take place and it inhibit P2A shift. Chloramphenicol inhibit P2A shift. And the last one, erythromycin act on the last step. Erythromycin inhibit the translocation, jumping of one codon. Jumping of one codon. So, A to P shift cannot be done. Everyone give me a thumbs up if you got it. So, that is the mechanism of action of the four antibiotics in front of you. Four steps, four antibiotics. Each antibiotic inhibiting one of the steps. The four steps are, for, are of translation. It is not transcription. Uh, all the four steps are of translation. So, translation is inhibited. Protein synthesis will not be there. Give me a thumbs up. So, this bacteria cannot synthesize the protein. Give me a thumbs up. You got my point. So, the four antibiotics are in front of you. Tetracycline, chloramphenicol, aminoglycoside and macrolide one that is erythromycin. These four I want to teach you. Right. See again. This is the first step initiation. Initiation. So, amino A for aminoglycoside. Aminoglycoside inhibit P window. Inhibit P window. So, initiation cannot be done. Initiation cannot be done. You can see this is the mechanism of action of aminoglycoside. The second antibiotic you can see here is tetracycline. Can you see here tetracycline? So, tetracycline inhibit A window. So, the second step that is binding of new, new amino acyl tRNA at the A window cannot be done. So, aminoglycoside was inhibiting the P window. Tetracycline is inhibiting the A window. So, step 1 that is initiation is inhibited by aminoglycoside. Step 2 that is coming of new amino acyl tRNA at the A window is inhibited by tetracycline. Give me a thumbs up. You got my point? Give me a thumbs up. Please everyone give me a thumbs up. Coming on the third. Peptide peptide bond formation and P2A shift. After peptide peptide bond formation the pre-existing one shift to the new. But this step P2A is inhibited by chloramphenicol. It is inhibited by chloramphenicol. You got my point? So chloramphenicol inhibit the third step that is peptide peptide bond formation and P2A shift. P2A shift is inhibited by chloramphenicol. And the last step, translocation. The complete ribosome moves by one codon. That is, you can see translocation. That is A to P shift. It is inhibited by erythromycin. You can see the four antibiotics, the four mechanism of action in front of you. Everyone give me a thumbs up if you got it. If you got it, let me move ahead. So, the same diagram from a book KDT, KD Tripathi. So, this is the same diagram which I have showed you in simplified sketch diagram. You can see the four antibiotics here. Antibiotic number one. This one is aminoglycoside. Since it is inhibiting the P window, inhibiting the first step initiation. You can see this antibiotic number two here. It is tetracycline. This one is tetracycline. You can see because it is inhibiting the A window and inhibiting the coming of new amino acid at the A window. The third antibiotic here, this one is chloramphenicol because it is inhibiting P2A shift. You can see, you can see the cross. It is P2A. And the last one here, you can see this one is erythromycin or macrolide because it is inhibiting A to P shift. That is translocation. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Concentrate on the four cross. So concentrate on the cross. Is it crossing A window? Is it crossing P window? Is it crossing P to A? Is it crossing A to P? Everyone give me a thumbs up. Jitne audience utni thumbs up. You got my point? So that is the mechanism of action. In short, I taught you mechanism of action of all four at, at a glance. At a glance, we have understood. So four steps, four antibiotics. Now, if I ask any antibiotic, you can tell me the particular step number. For example, tetracycline inhibits step number two. That is coming off new amino acid at A window. It acts on A window. It inhibit A window. So, step number 2 is inhibited. Right. If I ask aminoglycoside, it is inhibiting step number 1. That is initiation. That it inhibits P window. Because it inhibits inhibit P window. If I ask chloramphenicol, it, it inhibits step number 3. In step number 3, it inhibits P to A shift. There is no P to A shift. That is peptide-peptide bond formation and transfer of pre-existing one to the new one. And if I ask about the macrolide or erythromycin, it inhibits the last step. Step number 4. That is translocation. That is A to P shift. So, A to P shift will not happen here. Give me a thumbs up. So, at a glance, I taught you the mechanism of action of poor antibiotics. Now, now what? Now, I request all dear students, all dear audience to make this comparative table with me. Take out your notebooks. Don't be lazy. Take out your notebooks. 
take your pan and start making this table with me while watching the lecture only it is once for all once you make this table now it will be it will be fitted in your permanent memory and you can revise the entire chapter if you revise it from the book it will you will require one hour two hour but you will revise from your table now you can revise the entire chapter in just five minutes not more than five minutes are required and any mcq can be cracked from this chapter so please compare tetracycline chloramphenicol aminoglycoside and erythromycin under these points so in the introduction i will tell you there are some important points the scientists who discovered them or some important points then i will tell you classification in each category the most important then i will tell you the spectrum which bacteria they kill in the spectrum i will tell you whether they kill gram positive cocci whether they kill gram negative cocci whether they kill gram positive bacilli or whether they kill gram negative bacilli or whether they kill all so i will tell you now you know gram positive cocci are two staphylococcus streptococcus that i guess you already know gram negative cocci are two it is miseria and morexilla do you already know you already know the name of the bacteria inside each category so i will tell you out of the four category which antibiotic is killing which one so which are broad spectrum which are narrow spectrum being a doctor this point is very important for you now you all are going to be doctor or you are already doctor so whenever any patient come to your clinic with the certain complaints you are suspecting some bacterial infection and for confirming you are doing the culture so if specific bacteria you know which is present in the body of the patient you want to prescribe some specific antibiotic that is active against that particular bacteria right so for that you should know spectrum of all so which antibiotic is active against which bacteria and which is not active against which bacteria you should know the spectrum you should know the spectrum spectrum is very important mechanism of action overall i have already taught you at a once but when i will teach you individual category again we will revise for example tetracycline inhibits step number 2 chloramphenicol inhibits step number 3 aminoglycoside inhibits step number 1 and erythromycin inhibits step number 4 you already know what steps i am talking about we are having four steps right resistance i will tell you the mechanism by which bacteria produce resistance bacteria not want to kill so bacteria produce the ways how the bacteria can be resistant of antibiotics so i will tell you the various ways adverse effects i will give you four mnemonics here beautiful mnemonics a very easy mnemonic so that you can learn the adverse effect of all four categories users again i will give you four mnemonics so at the end of the lecture you will be left with eight mnemonics four mnemonics of the users and four mnemonics of the adverse effect so if any mcq come to your exam from users and adverse effect just apply my mnemonics so the answer will be in front of you without any confusion okay so without wasting time let me start the first category tetracycline everyone give me a thumbs up shall i start tetracycline are you ready for that i guess you are ready for that so tetracycline write in the introduction why tetra cycline is known as tetracycline introduction me write down it because it is having four rings it is having a nucleus of the four rings can you see the diagram of tetracycline here there are four benzene rings 1 2 3 4 that's why it is known as tetracycline number 1 number 2 it is obtained from actinomycetes so some antibiotics are obtained from bacteria some are obtained from fungus some are obtained from actinomycetes tetracycline is one of them which is obtained from actinomycetes so write down these two points in the introduction it is having four rings and it is obtained from actinomycetes that's it so in the introduction you can write down this thing so see i will also fill the table with you so don't be lazy you also fill the table with me right so on youtube you are not getting the notes now so make your own notes so in the introduction write down the four rings and write down it is obtained from actinomycetes write down that coming on the classification now listen tetracycline is a category inside which we are having seven antibiotics it is not one antibiotic tetracycline is a category so these are the classification so we divide tetracycline into three group group 1 group 2 and group 3 right you can see the three groups we divide the in group 1 we have three antibiotics the tetracycline itself the category is also tetracycline and inside the category tetracycline we have a drug known as tetracycline so tetracycline ke andar the first drug is tetracycline the second is chlor tetracycline the third is oxy tetracycline tetracycline chlor tetracycline oxy tetracycline very easy the category 1 the group 1 group 2 is demaclocycline and lemi cycline demaclo and lemi group 2 and group 3 we have doxy cycline and mino cycline so 3 plus 2 plus 2 3 4 5 6 7 so seven tetracyclines are available you should know the classification so what is the classification can someone help me in classifying tetracycline someone among the audience divide them into three groups group 1 group 2 group 3 so anyone ankit ujwal osama would you like to help me anyone else So group one we have three: the tetracycline itself, chlor tetracycline, and oxy tetracycline. Give me a thumbs up. 
In group 2, we have two, Demeclo, Demeclocycline and Lemmy, Lemmy, Lemmy cycline, Lemmy cycline. In group 3, again we are having two, Doxycycline and Minocycline. Give me a thumbs up, a big thumbs up. So that is the classification. So 3 plus 2 plus 2, total 7 tetracyclines are available in the world. This is the classification. So let me show you the classification. You fill it by yourself. You already know the 3 in group 1. You already know the 2 in group 2, the 2 in group 3. So total 7 names you have to write here. Everyone give me a thumbs up. In your table, fill it. Please everyone fill it. Coming on spectrum. Coming on, write down broad spectrum. Tetracycline is broad spectrum. But broad spectrum, I mean it kill gram positive bacteria, gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram positive bacilli, gram negative bacilli. Not only this, they kill all rickettsia also, chlamydia also, some protozoa also. So it is a broad spectrum, right? So you can see the spectrum is broad. All cocci, gram positive as well as gram negative. All bacilli, gram positive as well as gram negative. So that is spirochetes also, rickettsia also, mycoplasma also, protozoa also. So it is killing anything, everything. So see, gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram positive bacilli, gram negative bacilli, spirochetes, rickettsia, mycoplasma, protozoa. So that is the spectrum. In short, please write down this in your table. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. Right. Mechanism of action. Who will tell me mechanism of action? Which step it inhibit? So in translation, there are four steps. Step 1 is initiation. Does it inhibit initiation? Step 2 is coming of new amino acid at A window. So does it inhibit step 2? Step 3 is P to A shift. Step 4 is A to P shift. So what does it inhibit? Does it inhibit P window, A window, P to A shift, A to P shift. So out of the 4 steps which it inhibit? I have already explained you. Can you tell me the mechanism of action? Swaraj, Osama, Ankit, Ujwal, True Believer. Anyone else who is watching me live? Can you tell me what is the which step? Yes, Swaraj, absolutely right. It is step number two. So basically, first write down it inhibits protein synthesis. We all know all the drugs we are studying today or all of them are protein synthesis inhibitor. So it inhibits protein synthesis inside the bacteria. Okay. So it will act on the ribosome. So in the ribosome, which of them? The four antibiotics you can see. One, two, three, four. Which of them is tetracycline? The second number is tetracycline. This one. So it inhibits the step number two. Say so don't act on P window, it act on A window, it inhibit A window, it inhibit very good web how, it inhibit A window, yes, yes Osama, it inhibit step 2, it inhibit A window, so that second step will not occur, so it will not affect the initiation, initiation will be normal, but coming of new amino acid, every time new amino acid come on A window, so the coming of new amino acid at the A window is inhibited, right, so pre-existing one will always be there, but new will not come. If new will not come, so protein synthesis uh, chain is halted there only and it cannot mature, it cannot grow. Protein synthesis will not take place. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. So it is inhibiting this step. It is inhibiting A window. Since it is inhibiting A window, you can see this is A window. It is inhibiting. So new amino acid cannot come on the A window. There is no problem in the pre-existing one. There is no problem with the pre-existing one because it is not acting on the P window. P window is normal. It is acting normally. But there is a problem with the A window. A window will stop functioning. If you give tetracycline, just suppose I am the patient. I am having some infection. I am arriving to you. Doctor, I am having this, this infection. So looking at my infection, you feel light. You, you should give me some of the tetracycline to cure my disease, to treat my disease. I am having some skin infection, some, some infection. So you are prescribing doxycycline, minocycline, one of the tetracycline. You know the seven tetracyclines. So I am taking the tablet. So the tablet is going inside my esophagus, stomach and intestine. It got absorbed. It is going in my blood. From the blood, it is going to the bacteria. In my blood, in my body, bacteria is present. So it is going in that organ or in the blood where the bacteria is present. So tetracycline penetrate inside the bacteria. It penetrates the cell wall of the bacteria. After going inside the bacteria, it goes on the ribosome of the bacteria. In the ribosome of the bacteria, tetracycline inhibit A window. A window of the bacterial ribosome. Give me a thumbs up. So, the bacteria cannot synthesize protein now. The second step of the protein synthesis is inhibited. Since bacteria cannot synthesize protein, bacteria will die. Give me a thumbs up. So, this is the mechan... It, is not, it will not die. Uh, because the, the bacteria already have pre-existing protein. Right? The new one cannot be synthesized now. So, bacteria will not die. But the growth of the bacteria will be inhibited. So, tetracyclines are not bacteriocidal. They are bacteriostatic. You got my point? You got my point? So, this is the summary. So, you can see... So this is how, this is the flow chart, we can summarize the mechanism of action. Everyone have a look here. So tetracycline enters inside the bacterial cell, right? 
After entering inside the bacterial cell, tetracycline bind on 30s of the ribosome. It is an MCQ. It doesn't bind on 50s. It will bind here on the 30s. You can see the ribosome have two things. The 30s, this is 30s of the ribosome and this is 50s of the ribosome. So, tetracycline act on the 30s, not on 50s. Mind my words. Take this point in consideration. After going on 30s, tetracycline inhibit A window. So that now new amino acid cannot come and bind on the A window. So peptide chain cannot grow. The pre-existing one is there, but new one cannot come. So peptide chain fail to grow. So bacteria will not die, but bacteria cannot divide. So these are bacteriostatic. Give me a thumbs up. This is the mechanism of action of tetracycline, right? You can see this is a bacterial cell. Everyone see. Imagine this bacteria is present inside the body of the patient and you are a doctor. You are giving the drug to the patient to kill this bacteria, right? So this is the tetracycline you are giving to the patient. You are asking the patient to take a tablet of tetracycline. Any of the seven tetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline, demeclocycline, you know, chlor, chlor tetracycline, oxy tetracycline. So one of the tetracycline you are giving the patient so that the infection of this bacteria is cured. You want to kill this bacteria. Either you want to kill because it is causing infection in your patient or you want to stop the growth of this bacteria. So this tetracycline patient will take the tablet, tetracycline will be absorbed from the intestine and it will reach the blood. From the blood it is going to the bacteria. It will enter inside the bacteria. After entering inside the bacteria, it will go to here at 30s ribosome. It will not go at 50s, it will go at 30s. In 30s there are two windows, P and A. So tetracycline inhibit A window. Tetracycline will not inhibit P window. So there is no problem with the initiation. Initiation will be normal. But the new amino acid cannot come on the A window. So the growth of the peptide chain will not occur. So the new, new protein cannot be synthesized. But this bacteria already have the old protein. Old protein ko kuch nahi hoga. So bacteria will not die. But the thing is that this bacteria cannot divide further because the new protein cannot be synthesized. So tetracyclines are not bacteriocidal, they are bacteriostatic. You got my point? That's why I can teach you these are bacteriostatic. Give me a thumbs up. So in short, write down the mechanism of action in your flowchart. Everyone. So first tell me they act on 30s or 50s. They act on 30s. Always remember tetracycline act on. Now we will do a comparative analysis of the four now. Which antibiotic is acting on which S? 30s, 50s or both? This one act on 30s. This one act on 50s. This one act on both 30 plus 50. And this one again act on 50. So this is the comparative analysis of the four antibiotics on which fragment of the ribosome they are acting. Give me a thumbs up. They inhibit the step number two. That is A window. A window, right? The second one will inhibit uh, A2, P2A shift. The third one will inhibit the P window and the last one will inhibit A to P shift, right? This is how they inhibit the various steps and this is bacteriostatic. All of them are bacteriostatic except aminoglycoside which are bacteriocidal. Rest all three are bacteriostatic. So in all the four antibiotics, you have to compare three properties. What are the three properties you have to compare? Number one, on which S of ribosome they are acting. For all four, I will tell you. Number two, whether they are bacteriostatic or bacteriocidal. So all of them are bacteriostatic except aminoglycoside, which are bacteriocidal also. Bacteriostatic also, cidal also. And which step, which step or which window in translation they are inhibiting. So that you have to tell me for your MCQs. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Coming on the resistance. Everyone give me a thumbs up. You got it? Ankit, Swaraj, Vaibhav, Osama. You got it? Coming on the resistance. Now what do you mean by resistance? Resistance means bacteria is not liking the antibiotic. Bacteria want to survive. This is a bacteria. This cell is not human cell. This cell is bacterial cell. This bacteria do not want to die. I'm giving a tablet of tetracycline. This is my tetracycline. Let me draw a tetracycline. This star is tetracycline tablet, right? When this goes inside, it inhibits the A window and the bacteria cannot divide. But bacteria is not liking it. So bacteria want to oppose it. Bacteria want to grow. Bacteria want to divide. Bacteria want protein synthesis to take place. No one like to die. Nah? Bacteria also do not want, want to stop. Do not want the st to stop the cell division. So bacteria will oppose. There are three ways bacteria can oppose. Number one. So this tetracycline enters inside the bacteria using, using some transporters on the cell membrane. Right. So bacteria will inhibit those transporters. So tetracycline ka influx hi kam kar dega. Influx of the tetracycline will be reduced by the bacteria. The bacteria will cause some changes or some mutations in the transporter. So the tetracycline even cannot enter from the blood into the bacterial cell. If tetracycline cannot enter, how it will show its action? Number one. So number one mechanism is reduced influx by causing some changes in the 
transporters which cause influx of the tetracycline so tetracycline cannot enter the bacterial cell and bacteria will be happy okay i am surviving now no tetracycline cannot enter if it, at all it is doing the influx so there are vacuum cleaners bacteria will form some vacuum cleaners that again cause efflux that again increases the efflux of the tetracycline as soon as tetracycline enter at the same instant it will go out without showing its action so either bacteria decrease influx or increase efflux that is the first mechanism what is the first mechanism either decrease the influx of the influx means entry entry of the tetracycline in the cell or immediately after entry it is vacuum cleaned vacuum clean means increase efflux so decrease influx or increase efflux that is the first mechanism by causing some changes in the transporters on the cell membrane so the tetracycline either cannot come and if it all it is coming immediately it is uh, effluxed out it is exited out give me a thumbs up the first mechanism if this mechanism fails tetracycline will enter inside so the second mechanism the bacteria will cover the ribosome with protective protein with so that tetracycline cannot reach the bacteria kavach bana lega apne ribosome ke aspas so bacteria will form a protective covering around the ribosome so this tetracycline cannot reach the 30s of the ribosome and cannot show its action till tetracycline cannot reach the 30s of the ribosome tetracycline cannot show the action so the bacteria will be happy even you entered inside me you cannot reach my ribosome if you cannot reach my ribosome you cannot stop me from growing give me a thumbs up that is the second mechanism the third mechanism this bacteria will form an enzyme the name of the enzyme listen this is an enzyme it is synthesizing an enzyme the name of the enzyme is tetracyclinase tetracyclinase that what is the name indicate tetracyclinase it will degrade tetracycline so as soon as this tetracycline come inside the bacterial cell this enzyme acts on it and degrade the tetracycline before tetracycline kills bacteria bacteria kills tetracycline you got my point before tetracycline act on the bacteria and stop its growth the bacteria is forming an enzyme enzyme is already present that enzyme will act on the tetracycline cycline and degrade the degrade the molecule of the tetracycline degrade the four rings of the tetracycline so this tetracycline will become non functional everyone give me a thumbs up so what are the three ways of resistance you yourself tell me what are the three ways number one decrease influx or increase efflux decrease influx or increase efflux number two ribosomes is protected by a cover by a protective covering and number three tetracycline inactivating enzymes that is tetracyclinase i want thumbs up from everyone if you got the three ways of resistance then only i will proceed ahead these are the three ways of resistance you got my point so fill these three ways here i'm not writing it you write by your own so you write down the three ways of resistance number one decrease influx increase efflux number two ribosome is covered by protective covering by protective proteins and number 3 enzymes which degrade tetracycline the name of the enzyme is tetracyclinase so these are the three ways bacteria do the resistance now it's time to study the adverse effects it's time to study the adverse effects of the tetracycline i'm having a mnemonic for you have a look on the mnemonic please have a look on the mnemonic so the mnemonic is lk adwani l k अडवानी या अडवानी को अडवी कर दो एल के अडवी यू विल गेट कंफ्यूज एल के अडवी पी टी टीचर एल के अडवी इज पी टी टीचर सो एल एल स्टैंड फॉर लीवर डिजीज लीवर डैमेज इट कॉज लीवर डैमेज इट कॉज फैटी लीवर के स्टैंड फॉर किडनी डैमेज इट कॉज किडनी डैमेज ऑल्सो इट इट कॉज फैंकोनी सिंड्रोम इन द किडनी राइट अडवानी का ए इज एंटी एनाबोलिक इफेक्ट एंटी एनाबोलिक इफेक्ट डी is diabetes insipidus it is not diabetes mellitus it is diabetes insipidus v is vestibular damage in the ear in the ear we have two components na cochlea which is responsible for hearing and vestibule which is responsible for balancing so inner ear have two functions in human number one hearing that is cochlea and number two balancing that is vestibule so it is causing vestibular damage in the ear so patient cannot balance patient will have what i go patient will have tinnitus and what i go right i i stands for increase intracranial pressure intracranial pressure of the csf in the brain will increase right p p and t so p is phototoxicity and t is teeth and bone and add one more teacher ka t there is one more t that uh, it is teratogenic add here i forgot to write teratogenic everyone give me a thumbs up teratogenic never give tetracycline to any pregnant lady it is teratogenic first give me a thumbs up then i will give you explanation of all these so what is the mnemonic the mnemonic is in front of you the mnemonic is i'm writing the mnemonic you tell me the full form l k adwi adwi adwani mat bolo adwi l k adwi is a p t teacher c 
say the full form lk adv is a pt teacher so who will say the full form of adverse effect l for liver damage it causes fatty liver right k for kidney damage it causes fanconi syndrome in the kidney right a for anti anabolic effect right d is diabetes insipidus right v is vestibular toxicity in the ear i is increased intracranial pressure p is phototoxicity t is deposited it forms chilets with calcium calcium is present in the teeth and in the bone so in the teeth and bone it forms chilets right and damage the teeth and bone and teacher ka t is teratogenic everyone gave me a thumbs up swaraj you got it osama you got it lk adwi is a pt teacher i'm having one more mnemonic if you want to learn this learn this one if you don't like this learn this one kapil dev bat full form is same so don't try to mug up both you will get confused if you see the full form the same things are there so k a p i l d v d a t so full form is same none of them is different so either learn lk adwi pt teacher or learn kapil dev bat the full form if you see the full form the diseases are same none of the diseases different all the diseases are same everyone give me a thumbs up if you got the mnemonic if you got any of the mnemonic let me give you some some detail of all the adverse effect the first adverse effect as i have told you it is liver damage so in the liver if you if someone take tetracycline for too long they cause fatty liver and jaundice but it is reversible once you stop the tetracycline it will reverse and it is very occasional side effect not very frequent second is kidney damage i'm sorry the second one is the kidney damage the second one is the kidney damage all tetracycline there are seven tetracyclines na you already know the names i guess all seven tetracycline cause kidney damage except doxycycline doxycycline is safe for the kidney so if any patient with renal failure coming to my clinic and i feel some of the tetracycline should be given to the patient i cannot give any other tetracycline except doxycycline doxycycline is safe in renal failure it do not cause renal toxicity it do not cause damage to the kidney remaining all tetracycline the remaining six you know tetracycline itself oxytetracycline clotetracycline demeclocycline minocycline they all are kidney damage they call renal failure they cause fanconi syndrome in the kidney give me a thumbs up so doxycycline pe bahut mcq aata hai it is a very important pyq everyone give me a thumbs up so doxycycline is safe for the renal failure it can be used in renal failure remember that coming on the next use or next adverse effect is anti anabolic what do you mean by anti anabolic what is anabolism in human body what is anabolism anabolism is synthesis of protein synthesis of protein is anabolism so if i am the patient imagine i am taking a tablet of one of the tetracycline so that tetracycline get absorbed it will go in my blood from my blood the tetracycline will go to the bacterial cell also and my human body cell also it will inhibit the ribosome a window on the ribosome in bacterial cell also and it will inhibit the a window of human cell also so basically it inhibit protein synthesis in both in it will inhibit protein synthesis in the bacteria it is useful for us we want that but it will to some extent it will inhibit protein synthesis in human also that is not we do not want that so that is a adverse effect so that is anti anabolic so protein synthesis is inhibited in humans it is not at large extent to some extent because the main mechanism of action is protein synthesis inhibitor tetracycline cannot differentiate this is a bacterial cell this is a human cell i must inhibit the protein synthesis in bacterial cell but i must not do it in human cell it cannot differentiate that so tetracycline will enter in all cells it will inhibit protein synthesis in bacterial cell also in human cell to some extent in human cell also so it is anti anabolic in nature so no need to explain this side effect you got my point the fourth is diabetes insipidus what do you mean by diabetes insipidus out of the seven tetracycline one of the tetracycline causes diabetes insipidus not all what who is that demeclocycline demeclocycline is one of the tetracycline of group 2 right you know that it goes if someone is taking a tablet of demeclocycline or injection of demeclocycline demeclocycline will go in blood from the blood it will go it will go in the pituitary it will inhibit adh from the posterior pituitary so adh is absent now if a, what is the job of adh adh causes sodium water retention if there is no adh there is no sodium water retention and there is reduced urine concentrating ability so the patient will have excessive urination that is diabetes insipidus so only demeclocycline do so do so by inhibiting adh give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up the next is vestibular toxicity not all tetracyclines cause vestibular toxicity only one of them causes minocycline if someone is taking minocycline too long the patient will have vestibular toxicity in the inner ear and patient will have vertigo 
vertigo, ataxia, balancing problems. So only minocycline causes it, not all. You have to learn the names. The next is in increased intracranial pressure in the brain. All of them can cause it. It is a rare side effect. The next is phototoxicity. So if someone is taking any tetracycline, only two causes phototoxicity, D and D. Demaclocycline and doxycycline, D and D, double D. They cause it. So if, if someone is taking doxycycline or demaclocycline tablet, after taking the tablet, it will be absorbed in the blood. Now, after that, if I, if I move to the sunlight, if I move to the sunlight without protecting with claws, so the areas which are exposed to the sunlight will sunburn. It will be sunburn like, like reaction. That is phototoxicity. So, after taking the tablet of doxy and demaclo, patients should not move in direct sunlight. Sunburn can happen, right? That is phototoxicity. Give me a thumbs up. The last side effect is teeth and bone. Teeth and bone. Tetracycline form chelate with calcium and calcium is present only at two location in human body human entire body have calcium at two places number one teeth enamel of the teeth enamel of the teeth is made up of calcium and bones in the bones we have calcium right so if i take a tablet of tetracycline it will go in my blood from the blood it will go to the calcium it will go in the teeth it will go in the bone and form chillets there right now in the in the teeth that's why tetracycline is avoided in children never give tetracycline to the children in which teeth formation is taking place small children right so the tetracycline will form chillets here on the crown on the crown of the teeth and teeth discoloration yellowish discoloration brownish discoloration of the teeth will take place right so it will deposit it in the crown here i'm sorry just a second it will deposit it in the crown of the permanent dentition. You got my point. That's why it is avoided in children. And last is teratogenic. So I guess I am done. Let me summarize. So this, these are the adverse effects. Who will help me in summarizing? Someone among the audience can help me in summarizing the adverse effect of the tetracycline. Are you ready? So what is the mnemonic? First tell me the mnemonic. The mnemonic is L-K-A-D-V. A-D-V-I. L-K-A-D-V. P-T teacher. P-T teacher. So... One by one, you tell me the important points. Liver damage is caused by all, right? And it is occasional, it, it is reversible. Jointers will be there. Kidney damage is caused by all, except. Who will tell me except? Yes, Tavish, who will tell me except? Kapil Dev Bat. Tavish, you like that mnemonic. It's okay. You, you just remember that. But tell me the important points. Kidney damage caused by all, except. I want to know the name except. I want to know the name except. Except kya? except doxy doxy is safe for renal failure so learn the exception right anti-anabolic effects are caused by all they caused by all uh diabetes insipidus is caused by which one you tell me the name yes osama tell me name diabetes insipidus is caused by only one tell me the name of that the name of that is demaclo demaclocycline causes do, um, uh, uh, diabetes insipidus not all vestibular toxicity is caused by only one only one what is that only one so that is minocycline so, minocycline causes vestibular toxicities. Increased intracranial pressure is caused by all. It is caused by all and it is a rare side effect. Phototoxicity is caused by DND. DND, that is doxycycline and demaclocycline, right? Tith and bone chelation can be done by all. That's why it is avoided in children. Don't give in children. And teratogenic, don't give in pregnancy. Don't give to the children. Don't give to the pregnancy. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. So this is the summary of the adverse effect in front of you. And you can crack any MCQ based on that. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So that is the thing. So okay. After adverse effect. Let me move on. So I have written adverse effects here. Now let me move on the last thing. Uses. Uses of tetracycline. So let me teach you uses of tetracycline. So in the uses of tetracycline. Again I am having a mnemonic for you. A good mnemonic. So that you can revise the uses. So tetracycline is drug of choice. It is DOC. Tetracycline is drug of choice. For these much bacteria. These much bacterial infection. So there is a mnemonic vacuum bedroom 2. Or vacuum the bedroom. So V stands for Vibrio. For Vibrio tetracycline is a drug of choice. Vibrio cholerae. The cholera caused by Vibrio cholerae. A for acne. Right. So acne. It is caused by bacteria. Acne. Right. C for chlamydia. Chlamydia. Right. U for ureoplasma. And M for mycoplasma, right? So, ureoplasma, mycoplasma. Mycoplasma causes pneumonia, you know that. Ureoplasma, mycoplasma. B for borrelia, borrelia, right? That is relapsing fever caused by the borrelia. R is for rickettsia. Rickettsia ke liye bhi tetracycline is drug of choice. And T is for tularemia. Let me try. If I get confused, please you help me. Let me try, right? So, the mnemonic. What is the mnemonic? Who will, who will help me? 
for the users vacuum v a c u m don't say double c v a c u m vacuum the vacuum the the ka t bedroom b r bedroom is b r vacuum the bedroom the mnemonic is in front of you please kindly tell me the full form who will tell me the full form any one of you v for vibrio right vibrio cholerae a for acne c for chlamydia u for ureoplasma m for mycoplasma ureoplasma mycoplasma right t for tularemia b for borrelia the relaxing fever caused by borrelia and r for rickettsia so tetracycline is drug of choice for these much bacteria and the infection that is the users i am done i guess i am done everyone give me a thumbs up one more mnemonic is there bbc marvel the full form is same if you go with this full form it is same so either learn bbc marvel or either run learn vacuum the bedroom whatever you like learn one only don't learn both you will get confused so tetracycline is first drug of choice don't learn second drug of choice you will get confused i am done with the first chapter the first chapter is done from my side everyone give me a thumbs up see have a look so let me revise and we will do some mcqs based on that so can can we revise so tetracycline ka introduction there are four rings that's why known as tetracycline classification total seven tetracyclines are there you know tetracycline oxy tetracycline chlor tetracycline demaclocycline minocycline doxycycline and one more here was right doxycycline or ek aur kya tha ye mino yahan pe tha yahan pe lamicycline yes spectrum it is broad spectrum mechanism of action it act on 30s it is bacteriostatic and step number 2 that is a window is inhibited resistance you know the three ways adverse effect lk adv pt teacher and users vacuum the bedroom everyone give me a thumbs up you want me to launch some polls based on that i will launch okay just a second so this is the first question in front of you who will tell me the correct answer i want to see who is first so tetracycline inhibit protein synthesis by inhibiting this step by inhibiting this step is it inhibiting initiation is it binding to 30th subunit and inhibiting the binding of new amino acid trna is it inhibiting peptide transferase activity that is peptide peptide bond formation is it inhibiting the last step translocation so basically this is step 1 this is step 2 this is peptide peptide bond is step 3 and this is step 4 so which which of the following is the correct answer yes ujwal you are first and you are right very good the correct answer here is b yes osama very good so it inhibits step number 2 it binds on 30s and inhibit the binding of new amino acid trna on the a window on the a window so correct answer here is b you all are right gamma nai swaraj very good the next question is in front of you which of the following tetracycline is safe in renal failure without dose adjustment so which of the following is safe in renal failure is it oxy tetracycline doxycycline demaclocycline or tetracycline which of the following four tetracycline one of the four is safe in renal failure all tetracycline cause kidney damage except one tell me the exception so again ujwal uh safali rakesh osama swaraj gamma nai you all are right the correct answer is b doxycycline doxycycline is a tetracycline only tetracycline which is safe in renal failure the next question is in front of you tetracycline inhibits protein synthesis by acting on which ribosome is it acting on 30s it is 50 ha huh? 50s both 30 and 50 or 60s 30s 50s 30 plus 50 or 60 there is nothing like 60 we all know that there is nothing like 60 you all are right again so again ujwal very good so swaraj very good the correct answer here is a rakesh osama yes it acts on 30s right so correct answer here is a next question which of the following tetracycline have maximum propensity for causing photodermatitis which two i have told told you the name of the two tetracyclines which are photosensitive which causes photosensitivity which causes photosensitivity so can i can you tell me the correct answer so is it oxy tetra is it doxy is it minocycline or is it beta 2 agonist so the correct answer is d and d i have told you the two names doxycycline and demaclocycline among the two d's one is given in the option so go with b yes yes wasim ujwal tavish swaraj very good rakesh everyone is right correct answer again b correct answer again b coming to the next question which of the following is not true regarding tetracycline i am saying not true so which of the following is false so it is not teratogenic it is false yes or no it can cause teeth discoloration is it false it results in super infection is it false or it can lead to pseudo membrane colitis is it false so usama you are absolutely right the correct answer here is a yes swaraj it is not teratogenic no it is false it is teratogenic but yeah it can cause super infection and pseudo membrane colitis rarely it can cause that so correct answer here is a because as i have told you all tetracyclines are teratogenic never give them in pregnancy 
which of the following antibiotic should not be given with milk you know in india there is a mentality of the patient to take the drugs with the milk so whenever i prescribe any tablet to my patient they say doctor okay i will take it with the milk they feel like uh, taking antibiotic with the milk is a good thing i don't know so whatever is the reason so you most of the people used to take the antibiotic with milk so whenever which antibiotic should be avoided with milk and why why yes the correct answer here is tetracycline because tetracycline forms chelates with calcium if the patient is taking tetracycline along with milk in the stomach only it will form chelate and it will not absorb so there is no use if you take the tetracycline with milk so always warn your patient never take, take tetracycline with milk uh let me see i am done with the first chapter tetracycline but if i wish i was having time to continue with the other three but i would like to stop here i would like to stop here so if you wish tomorrow we can continue with the other three and we can continue with our table we can continue with our table filling our table like this and continuing our table and we will fill this table completely so that all mcqs based on this can be cracked right so currently i would like to stop and continue my next lecture on the app just a second okay okay so there are few announcements before that a very important announcement i have to give you i'm having next lecture right now just after five minutes sharp at nine o'clock sharp at nine o'clock i'm having my next lecture just a second let me announce the topic so i'm taking a crash course for second prof mbbs students i'm teaching pathology there from 9 to 1 30 i'm having four hour lecture on unacademy learners app it is a free lecture you all can come and learn pathology from me so if you are installing the app and coming on the app and if you want to study pathology from me just go to the neat pg category you can see me live there my name is dr priyanka sachdev search my name in educators you will find my live lecture sharp at nine o'clock right now right now just after five minutes ten minutes at 9 a.m i will be live there with pathology crash course for second prof right the only thing you require a code to unlock it the code is suchdev10 my surname suchdev s a c h d e v use this code suchdev10 to unlock any lecture on an academy any free lecture on an academy so please distribute this code and uh, please give uh, this code so ujwal thank you for the feedback and you can if you you can continue studying from me coming on the app if you already have the app please come and study there if you don't have the app, install an Academy Learners app from the Play Store and go to Neat PG category. It is a category for all medicos, right? And in that, you can see me live after a few minutes. Only thing, click on the link, click on the live lecture. The code will be asked. The code is such date and note down the code, right? That is the thing. One more important announcement I'm having for you. The most important announcement is that an Academy Learning Festival is going on. What do you mean by that festival? You know, in an Academy, we have paid subscriptions also. You can imagine if the free class is so knowledgeable, so impressive. So how the full course will be? In the full paid course, we cover all 19 subjects from first prof to final prof in a detailed manner so that you can crack any exam, whether it is a university exam of any prof or whether it is a competitive exam need pg fmg inict next usmle we give you complete solutions of all exams so you want to take the paid subscription but most of the students says that ma'am we are not sure whether we like it or not like it so how to take the subscription so there is a solution for you so you just pay rupees 299 you just pay rupees 299 you will get an academy plus subscription free subscription for one month you give a try for one month at just cost of 299 if you like it you extend it if you don't like it it's over don't worry so only wastage will be 300 to 299 and if you like it you will get an experience of the plus and during this one month you can attend all live classes present on the plus platform the paid version you can download the paid classes you can see the recorded version of the paid classes so you will have a great experience you will believe me believe my words so ha have uh, believe me and why don't you give a trial don't believe my words you just give a trial just at rupees 299 is not a very big amount of course everyone can afford it i guess right so for getting this offer again you will require a code the code is again my surname go to the payment take one month subscription it will be asking for rupees 300 if you have a code the code is my surname Sachdev Dan. No doubt. It is S A C H D E V. Sachdev. Sachdev 10 is the code. And this offer is valid only from 9th of May to 16th of May. After 16th of May, the same one month subscription will be 2000, not at 300. Now you can compare the cost 300 and 2000, right? So you can, if you are smart, so please take advantage of this offer. It is an advice. It is not compulsion. If you like it, you can do it. If you don't like it, it's okay. But note down the code for you and your colleagues, your friends. You can distribute this information to everyone. Whosoever in the entire globe 
want to take an academy subscription take it at 299 using my code note down the code and distribute it everyone in all medical groups your batch groups your seniors juniors interns all the medicos throughout the globe whatever country you belong to please distribute this code it is my surname sachdev s a c h d e v sachdev 10 without any space it is sachdev 10 so use this code and you will get one month neat pg subscription only at 299 make use of this opportunity otherwise after that this is the plan these are the plans just a second let me show you the other plans so these are the plans so two month subscription is 7000 so you can see the prices they are very high but only one month is 299 compare 299 with all these with all these with all these so you yourself find it is very useful it is and this offer will never come back it is lifetime opportunity make use of it and please inform everyone about it thank you very much join me on the app just after five minutes bye bye study hard i'm ending this lecture all the best